Whew. Pile of parts. J Dub shop time. Turn the wall Jeep on here. Uh, we're getting close on the 2.5 liter uh, Amish horseless carriage build here. Uh, ran into a few things, you know, doing things like two, three times every time because I haven't built one of these before. And uh, got caught by just a couple little things that uh, had to redo, of course, you know, or double check. And uh, so I got kind of a list of things to you small block Chevrolet and small block Ford guys that I had to kind of slow down and backtrack and look through parts and make sure that I was doing things right a few times that just kind of naturally come to a guy when he's working on a small block Chevy or a small block Ford or even Chrysler motors, um, different Chrysler motors, like 360s and stuff. Um, so first thing I ran into, um, when you're doing these motors, be careful because it's really easy. I could see how a guy can do it and I heard this story before and it ruined the guy's crank and brand new rods and everything and it was a 3.0 liter stroker built and the fellow that built it for him apparently hadn't done a whole lot of little Chrysler four cylinders either before because uh, typically you know where your thrust bearing would go to keep your crank in the back from walking forward and aft. Um, he had put the thrust bearing in the back of the block instead of at the front journal. Uh, your second journal back is where your thrust bearing actually goes, but the thrust bearing itself will physically fit over the journal on the back. So I could see how a guy could do it real easy if he wasn't paying attention. Because I actually had the bearing, I actually had the bearing sitting, sitting in the journal, and it was loose. And then I started looking at the crankshaft and started looking at the back journal and the other journals, your front bearing, second bearing, third and fourth, and so on. Right? Uh, had determined that just by looking at it, that the wear on the sides of your crankshaft fall on the second journal back. So just be careful if you build one. Not common to me, you know, being a small block Chevy guy. Uh, another thing that I kind of came across, and I've heard about this before too, is oil leaks on your front timing cover. And reason being is, unlike a Chevrolet or a Ford, once again, a little different, it doesn't have any alignment dowels anywhere. So this cover will physically kind of float around on the front and if you don't tighten it down in the right spot, then your seal's not gonna seal. So you need to put your harmonic balancer or some kind of centering tool in there. And I believe that Chrysler or Jeep does make a centering tool for actually properly positioning the cover. I used the balancer, then pulled the balancer back off and put my additional bolts in it around the side. Uh, Another little issue I came across, and it was just, I don't know if it was sorting bolts, but I realized we had a, a bolt that was bottoming out and not allowing my thermostat to seal. Uh, got the water pump on, had to take it back off to spin this another rotation here for the heater tube. It was really loose once I got the pump on and realized that later, of course. Um, there was something else. Oh, I got my new soft plugs in. This is what this is all about. Don't forget, it was just new soft plugs. Um, oh, uh, back main cap. On your rear main cap here, this is actually part of the main cap right there. So you need to put a little thin, thin layer of RTV sealant, silicone sealant, between that cap and the block. Otherwise, it can start seeping around the edge of your seal straight through the block right there. Don't forget that. That's another one that's, you know, not something that a Chevrolet is all about, right? Um, head bolts. Uh, we did new head bolts in this and something to watch out for just specific to the years. Um, the earlier years. The earlier year would uh, torque down to, I believe it was 75 pounds, 85 pounds throughout all the 10, 
I believe it is, and number 11 on this front corner is 10 pounds less because it's got sealant on it. And when I'd done the head gasket before, that was something that I didn't do, was put uh, water, you know, water tight type sealant, you know, thread seal on this bolt. It has to be done. It's down into the water in the water uh, galley behind the water pump. The rest of them are fine without sealant. And that's the difference on the torque rating is that this one slips because of the sealant. So it gives you a false reading if you go more than uh, 110 pounds or if you go at 110 pounds then it's going to probably be more like 120 or maybe even 130 or whatever so that's why it's 10 pounds less the rest of them 110 100 pounds uh, other than that it's together other than that so I think she's ready to roll so we're going to finish getting some parts cleaned up today and Somebody commented that I should set up a tripod or something and make videos, and I ain't got that kind of time like that. I can barely make a video on my own, you know what I mean? I ain't got time to deal with YouTube stuff, you know. I ain't even got a computer. I just do this on my phone. I don't even know why. So, anyway. Uh... If you think you got time to come help me edit and merchandise and get me a bigger shop and, you know, lift and, you know, oh, uh, advertisement department and, oh, uh, camera person and, oh, yeah, then maybe we'll start making videos where we actually fix something. But this ain't a fix stuff shop. It's just what I do. Hobby. I don't even know why I show you. So, anyway, love all you guys. Wall Jeep in the background. J-Dub shop time.